Hi there, my name is Jennifer Noel. Welcome to another crochet tutorial. In this video, I wanna share with you how to crochet this drawstring style bunny backpack. This is a child size, but I do have some modification suggestions so you can make it a little bit larger if you'd like it for a teen or for an adult. So it opens on the top here, pulls open. There's quite a bit of space on the inside, so there's plenty of room to stick some cute little things on the inside. I'll even show you how to crochet these cords for the straps and how to do the applique for the face. So let me show you the supplies that you're going to need and let's crochet this cute bunny. So we're going to be working with two different sizes of crochet hooks. So we're going to be working with a size 5 millimeter, that's a size H, and then a 4.5 millimeter. So the 4.5 will be used to make the ears of the bag and then the five is gonna be used to make the base of the bag. You're also gonna need a stitch marker, a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and then just four colors of yarn. So you mainly want your body color. So whatever color you decide to make the body, you want at least one skein of. And this is a size four worsted weight yarn. It's a size four medium. And then these are gonna be used for the little detailing. So you just need a little bit of pink, white, and black. And of course I'm using light blue for this bag today. We're gonna to start with the body of the bag. So you're gonna need your main color of yarn, your size five millimeter crochet hook, and a stitch marker. And we're gonna start with a slip knot. So you can make this any way that you make a slip knot. If you have not made one before, I usually will hold it in my hand at an angle, wrap the yarn back, and up to make a little X. Flip your fingers over and hold it with the other fingers. Take your hook and just go underneath this first line and pull this second one down and then you're just going to tighten it around the little loop on your hook and then this will tighten right up. So you're gonna start with the chain three. So yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through, and one more time. And now you'll see that we just created three chains here. So into this very first chain, we want to slip stitch. So in that top loop, we're going to put our hook in, yarn over, and pull through that loop, and then pull through the loop on your hook. So we're going to work into this space right here, and we're going to work with single crochets. So we're gonna put our hook directly into the center of that ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. So that's our first single crochet and we want a total of six. And six. So the base of the bag that we're starting at the very bottom is gonna be worked in a continuous round. So we're just gonna go directly into the first stitch here to start round two. So this will be an increase round. We're gonna place two single crochets into every single stitch, but when you work your first single crochet, you wanna take your stitch marker, and this is where you're gonna put it right in those two loops right there. And that tells us that that's our very first stitch of the round. So we just worked one single crochet. We wanna work one more into that same stitch. And then again, just be placing two single crochet, crochets into every single stitch. You'll have a total of 12 single crochets at the end of this round. There's our 12th single crochet. We're back to this very first stitch here so we can remove the marker. Set that aside for a second. So now we're starting round three. Round three is gonna be done with one single crochet and an increase. And we're gonna repeat that into every single stitch. So the very first stitch will get a single crochet. Replace your stitch marker. And then we're gonna increase into that next stitch. So that's two single crochets into that stitch. Now repeat that pattern all around. A single crochet, and then two single crochets into the next. Now when you finish this round, you should have a total of 18 single crochets. 
and when you come to your last stitch, you should be working an increase into this stitch. Again, that's your 18th single crochet. So now we'll remove our marker and we're gonna start round four. So round four will be a single crochet. Place your marker. And one more single crochet. So that's one single crochet into each of these two stitches. We're gonna increase into this third stitch. And that will be our pattern repeat for round four. So into the next two stitches, work one single crochet, and then increase into this third stitch. Single, single, and then two. And when you come to the end of this round, you'll have a total of 24 single crochets. For round number five, we're gonna place a single crochet into the first stitch, replace our marker. And this time we're gonna increase the single crochets by one. So last round we worked two single crochets, now we're gonna work three. So this counts as our first one. There's our second single crochet and then our third single crochet. And then we're gonna work an increase into the fourth stitch. And that'll be our pattern repeat for this round. At the end of round five, you'll have a total of 30 single crochets. We're gonna increase again. So this next round, we're gonna be working four single crochets and then an increase. So remember on the first single crochet of the round, we're gonna replace our stitch marker. You'll notice for every single round, again, all we're doing is just increasing the number of single crochets that we have, and that expands this circle really nicely. So again, we're gonna be working four. So one, two, three, four, and then an increase. Now repeat that all the way around. We're gonna increase again for the next round. So we're gonna work five single crochets and then an increase for this entire round. At the end of round seven, you should have a total of 42 single crochets. And then we're gonna increase again. So this round will be six single crochets and then an increase. You'll have a total of 48 single crochets for this round. Now for the next round here, we're gonna increase again. So we're gonna work seven single crochets and then an increase. At the end of round nine, we'll have a total of 54 single crochets. We have one round of single crochets left and this is one more increase round. So we're gonna increase, we're gonna single crochet for a total of eight and then increase. So we should have 60 single crochets at the end of this round. So round 10 completes the bottom of the bag. So now we're gonna start working up to make the sides of the bag. So go ahead and take your stitch marker out. We're gonna be working the next several rounds and half double crochets. So for round 11, we're gonna be working in the back loop only. So if you're looking here at your stitch, there's the front loop here and then the back loop is here in the back. We're just gonna be working in that back stitch or that back loop for now. So we're gonna yarn over into the very first stitch here, go into that back loop, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So there's your first half double crochet. Go ahead and replace your stitch marker. And we're just gonna be working one half double crochet into the back loops of every single stitch all the way around, you will have a total of 60 half double crochets for round 11. Here's our 60th half double crochet. We're gonna take out our stitch marker. Now the next round for round 12 and actually through um, round 26 for 15 rounds total, we're just gonna be working one half double crochet into every single stitch. So yarn over like we've been doing, go into the first stitch, both loops, 
pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and replace that. So again, just work one half double crochet into every single stitch for a total of 15 rounds, and that will be rounds 12 through 26. Go ahead and work those stitches and those rounds, and I'll meet you when we get to the end of round 26. Here's the last stitch of round 26. So you'll see that the sides of the bag are coming up really nice. And by going in these back loops, we created this nice ridge and it also helped the stitches to come up the sides. So now for round 27, this is gonna be a round where we're gonna create little gaps in between the stitching so that that way we can weave through our cord um, for the backpack part. So to start round 27, we're going to take out our stitch marker. We're gonna slip stitch into this stitch and that's gonna kind of even out our stitches a little bit. Now we're gonna chain three. That's gonna count as a double crochet. This round is gonna be worked in double crochets. Into the same stitch, we're gonna work another double crochet. So yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, now we're gonna chain two. We're gonna skip two stitches. And then into this third stitch here, we're gonna work another two double crochets. That's gonna be our repeat for this entire round. So again, chain two, skip two, and then two double crochets. So go ahead and keep repeating this pattern and I'll meet you back when we get to the end of round 27. So here I just completed my last two double crochets with the chain two. And to finish this round, we're just gonna go to the top of this chain here that we first created, the chain three. We're gonna put our hook into the top of that chain and we're gonna slip stitch. We're gonna pull this up a little bit and let me show you what we have. So that completes the actual body part of the bag. And this is where, again, our cord is gonna go through to make um, the little cinch for the backpack. Now, if you wanna count these little clusters here, you should have a total of 20 of these little um, sets of two double crochets. And um, once you have that, let's go ahead and start on the ears. So this is where you're gonna need your different size hook. So we're gonna switch from the five millimeter down to the 4.5 millimeter. You don't have to do this step, but I just noticed that it makes the ears um, a little bit more sturdy because it makes the stitching a little bit tighter. So we're just gonna replace our hook here back where we left off into this stitch, into that slip stitch. And we're gonna go ahead and start the ear. So now to do that, we want to chain one and we're going to work a decrease over these two stitches. So this, our chain one does not count as a stitch. So to do a single, we're working in single crochets also, we're doing a single crochet decrease. So we're going to go into this first space where we started. You're going to pull up a loop, leave that there into the top of this double crochet. We're going to go back into that stitch pull up a loop. And once you have these three loops, you can yarn over and pull through all three. So that turned those two stitches down into one. We're gonna work two single crochets into this um, chain two space. One, two. So that's again, a total of three stitches. And we're gonna decrease again over these two double crochets. And then you're gonna place two single crochets into the chain two space. You wanna continue doing this until you have a total of 28 stitches. So I usually count as I go. So we have, this one here is our first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, another decrease for 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, we're almost there, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and the last stitch will be a decrease, 28. So you'll see that we started over here. That took up this almost half of the bag. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clusters of these double crochets that we worked over. So we're going to be working in a back and forth um, stitch for the ears. So we want to chain one and turn our work. So now we're going to work across back the other way. So what we want to do is we want to work two decreases. So a decrease over the first two, a decrease over the second two. And that is a single crochet. So go right in, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through both. Do that one more time. And then we're gonna work one single crochet into the next 20 stitches. So you can just count that. One, two. And there's 20. And once you reach 20, you should have four stitches left. You're gonna work two decreases. So a decrease, single crochet decrease over these two, and then another decrease over the last two. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. Now we're just gonna work one single crochet into every single stitch across. You'll have a total of 24 single crochets. We're gonna chain one and turn again. So to start round four of the ear, we're gonna work two decreases, and then we're gonna work 16 single crochets, and then we're gonna finish with two decreases in the last four stitches. Now for rounds five and six, both of those rounds, we're just gonna work one single crochet into every single stitch across, and that's gonna be a total of 20 stitches for each row. All right, we just completed row six, so now row seven, we're gonna work just one decrease, 16 single crochets, and then one decrease at the end. Now we're going to do another two rows of one single crochet in each stitch. So rows eight and nine are going to have 18 single crochets in each row. Now round 10 is going to be a decrease, 14 single crochets, and then another decrease. Row 11 is going to be one single crochet into every single stitch. You'll have a total of 16 single crochets. Row 12 is gonna be a decrease, single crochet for 12, and then another decrease. Row 13 will be one single crochet into every stitch. Okay, row 14 is gonna be a decrease, and then one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, finishing with another decrease. And then row 15 will be one single crochet into each stitch for a total of 12. And then now for the last four rounds, it's gonna be done exactly the same. We're going to be doing a decrease over the first two, single crocheting across the top until we get to the last two stitches, and then working another decrease. And we're gonna just keep doing that until we get to a total of 19 rounds up and you'll have a total of four stitches 
when you come to the end. All right, here's our last round of the ear, row of the ear. So there's a decrease, a single crochet for the next two stitches, and then another decrease. So for this very first ear, we will fasten off the blue. So to do that, just chain one, and you're gonna take your scissors, give yourself a little bit of a tail because you're gonna weave that in. And there you go. So that completes, let me zoom this out a little bit. Let's see if I can, there we go. So that completes our very first ear. So this is actually gonna be folded in half like this, and it's gonna be scrunched together here. <laughs> so there's the very first one. We just need to make one more ear on the other side. So now to do that, we're just gonna lay this flat with this ear facing down. And we're gonna go to where we um, left off or where we started right in here. We wanna skip this chain two space and we're gonna start our um, next ear into these two double crochets. So take again your 4.5, your smaller crochet hook, go into the very top of this first double crochet Now we're gonna reattach the blue. So make sure there's a little bit of a tail at the end. We're just gonna wrap that around, pull up a loop, hold on to it here so it doesn't slip out. And then I'll chain one. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna work a single crochet decrease over these two stitches. So a decrease. And then we can actually float the tail here to hide it so um, we don't have to weave it in later. So to do that, you're just gonna set this tail, if you've never floated yarn before, just on top of the stitches. Pretend that it's not there and we're gonna work around it. So two single crochets in here. So what I mean by that is when you go to do your two single crochets, you're just gonna work around that so it hides that. So there's your two single crochets. And then again, do a decrease, two single crochets, decrease. And once you get a few little stitches in there, you can put that back behind and forget about it. So you're gonna continue repeating this until you have a total of 28 stitches. That should take you to this very last um, set of two double crochets here. So you're not gonna work any stitches into here. Your 28th stitch should be a decrease over these two stitches. And there's my 28th stitch. And chain one and turn. So now you can repeat the same exact steps that you had here for this ear, for the second ear here. But when you get to the very end, you don't wanna fasten off this yarn, you wanna keep it attached. Um, but so you don't have to go over and watch all the directions again. I did put all the steps for the ears down below. Um, the free written pattern is below for the ear part. So I'll meet you when you get to the end of round 19 of the second ear to show you how to finish off the body of the bag. So I just completed the second ear here and you'll see that it gives these cute little bunny ears. And again, when you cinch these together, you're really gonna see them. Um, but we are gonna be leaving this uh, yarn attached. So let me show you what we're gonna do to finish off the body of the bag. So when you come to your last stitch up here, it should your, the work should be facing you. Um, the right side of the work should be facing you. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna chain one and we're gonna work a single crochet into every single stitch around the entire top of the bag. It'll just finish it off really nicely and um, make it look a little bit more polished. So if you want to, you could insert your um, stitch marker here so you don't lose place. And you don't really have to count where you're placing your stitches. Just kind of work a single crochet wherever you see little gaps. If you miss one or if you add an extra one, that's totally okay. Because again, this is just the finishing round. So I'll work this side with you really quick and then I just wanna show you, I'm gonna go a little bit faster, how to do um, the stitches right down here where the ear ends. Okay, when you're coming to these last few little stitches of the end, again, just keep working stitches where you think that they should go. But the only thing that you want to do to make sure of is to place a single crochet into the very um, last and first double crochets and put two single crochets 
into the chain space. And then that way it makes it just a little bit more sturdy in here, just like that. And then repeat the second ear, see how nice that looks? And repeat this um, on the other side. And then I'll meet you back when we get up here to the end. So I just worked my very last single crochet to finish off the top, um, the top finishing of the bag here. And you'll notice that I, well, what I like to do is leave that last little stitch that was um, where we did the chain one. You can work into it if you want to. I always just skip it and then I'll go into the first stitch and do a slip stitch. And then chain one. And then that's where you can cut your yarn. And there you have the body of the bag completed. So now that the body of the bag is completed, well, almost complete, you do want to weave in your ends at this point. So this is where your tapestry needle comes in. Um, I'll show you quickly just one if you've never weaved in um, an end, uh, a yarn end before. So I'll take just a little end here and I'll take the, um, the back side, I guess this is called the eye side of the needle and just pinch that to make a little ball. And then that can just slide right in. That's the easiest way that I found to thread the needle. And then on the wrong side of the work, on the back here, you can just go lightly through. And when I say lightly, you just want to make sure that your hook isn't seen from the other side. And you want to go down just into random stitches. Pull that through, but don't pull too tight because you don't want that to scrunch up on you. And then making sure not to go back in where you came out, you want to work back the other way. You can go the exact same direction um, over the exact same area that you went, or you can come and go down a different side. Depends on what you want. I normally only do this two times, like you just saw, but you're really supposed to do three. So we're just gonna leave it there at three. So give this a little tug and you can snip that off. So do that with the rest of your ends. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the cording here. So there's two different ways that you can do the cord. The cord is what is gonna be, you're gonna need two pieces, and it's gonna be what's strung along here to cinch this, but it's also gonna be attached to the back of the bag um, for the straps for the backpack part. So you can pre-purchase cord if you want to. Um, you know, the little skinny cord, like the uh, little cords on a sweatshirt, it'll look kind of like that. You could buy two pieces of those if you wanted, or you could get one long piece. You want it between 50 to 52 inches long for each piece. You're gonna need a total of two. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to make them so you don't have to buy an extra thing. If you do have an I-cord maker, if you even know what that is, you could use that for this. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to make um, I believe this is called a Romanian cord. We're gonna use the color of the body of the bag to make the Romanian cord. So go ahead and start with a slip knot. And don't work too hard on this. Um, don't have your tension too hard. Keep it a little bit looser if you can. You're gonna chain two. Back into the very first chain, you're gonna work a single crochet. And then you're gonna turn your work clockwise and you'll see this little bump right here, this one, and then this little back stitch, you wanna work into both of those. So go under the first one, under the second one, and you're gonna work a single crochet. Now turn your work clockwise. You'll notice you have two little loops there. You wanna work under both of them and work a single crochet. And then you're just gonna keep flipping, keep working into those two loops with single crochets. And then you'll have a nice sturdy cord. This is if you don't, again, have an I-cord maker or you didn't pre-purchase an I-cord. This makes it a little bit more sturdy than just going through with a chain. And it gives a really nice textured look. I'll do a few more of these and then I'll show you what it's looking like. So make sure to just keep turning and to keep going into those two back little loops there. Look how pretty that's turning out. 
So it has some nice texture, has little bits of stitching on the sides. And you wanna just keep doing this. You don't have to count it, but you just wanna make them, again, for a child size, anywhere from 50 to 52 inches long. And if you're making an adult size, um, if you wanted to wear them as an adult, you can make the straps about 56 inches long. But the beauty of making your own cord like this is that you can start with a um, smaller size and then see if it will work well for you. So just keep repeating this. Again, you're gonna make two pieces. It'll take a little bit of time, but make two pieces and um, I'll meet you back when I have both of mine done. And I'm just gonna be making mine um, 50 inches long. Now to make the eyes, they're very simple. We're gonna take just a little bit of black yarn. I know that this is hard to see, but it's very, very simple to explain. We're gonna start with a chain three. So go ahead and make your slip knot, chain three, slip stitch into the very first space. And then you're gonna to have to feel for the center of this. And you're just gonna work six single crochets. Again, I know you can't really see this because it's black, but this is really simple. This is all that we're gonna do is just these six. And then once you get to your sixth one, we're just gonna slip stitch into the very first stitch and fasten off. So I'm not gonna chain one at this point, but you can pull the back end of your tail so it closes that a little bit nicer. But you do wanna leave a little bit of a long tail so that that way you can sew that onto your bag and just pull that out. You wanna make two of these. So now to finish the eyes, you're just gonna need a little bit of white. And we are gonna thread this through our tapestry needle. You don't need a, bear, you don't need a lot of this um, hanging off this end here. So we're gonna work so hard to see this, but just underneath one stitch, just pop your hook underneath one from the back up and then just go through the center. And that's it. We're gonna pull that out. Just leave a little bit of a tail so that that way you can tie that into a knot in the back. So we'll cut this. Okay, we're just gonna set this aside for a second. We'll do that one more time. There's that. Okay, we'll set those aside for a second. Now go ahead and grab your pink. And we're also gonna be using the same size five millimeter crochet hook. And then we're gonna make the nose. So the nose is the same thing. We're gonna start with a slip knot, a chain three, slip stitch into the first stitch and then we're gonna work into the center here. So we're gonna work a single crochet, a double crochet, a half double, a single, Now we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna repeat that up the other side. So we're gonna work a single crochet, a half double crochet, a double crochet, and then a single crochet. And that kind of gives us that little kind of triangle shape, kind of like a bunny nose. So to finish this, we're just going to go into this first stitch here and we're going to slip stitch. We're not going to chain one. We're just going to cut the yarn here. And again, do cut a little bit more of a tail here. You want, I don't know, maybe about a foot and a half, two feet. You don't quite need two feet, but because we're going to um, use this to not only sew that on, but we're going to create um, the bottom part of the mouth there. So pull that through. You can pull this shorter little string to close that off. So there's your little nose. 
and let's go ahead. We're gonna sew on the face before I show you how to attach the cording in here. So now to find the middle here, you're gonna go to this little center um, eyelet here and we're gonna find the two stitches right below here. These are gonna be our mid two stitches. They look a little um, crooked, but once you kind of even out the bag, there you go. You can see these two, these two rows of stitches coming down. That's gonna be our midpoint. So you could take your stitch marker at this point and just kind of go down just a little ways and put it around those two so that that way we know that that's the center. And then we want to attach the eyes between um, rounds, I believe it's 19 and 20. Yes, 19 and 20. So where our ridge line is down here, this set of stitches, there's a little set right here. This is um, round 11. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh wow, we put it right in between 19 and 20. So this is perfect. So this is where we want to place our eyes. You'll notice that one eye will fit along two of those stitches. We want a six um, stitch spacing in between the eyes. So we're around these two. So we just wanna count over two more and that's where we wanna attach our very first eye. So you also want this little highlight that we made, you want it at an angle from the middle facing the top right. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to put that down into that next stitch and that way that's facing in the back. We're gonna line this up right about there. So again, here's the middle, we wanna count over three and we just wanna kind of attach it in this space. So we're gonna turn this around and you're gonna weave it in through the base of the bag and back up. And you're gonna come down and do that again. Don't worry about those other tails. We're gonna actually put those, we're gonna weave those into the center of the bag. So we can move those to the side. Now I am gonna go ahead and put this in the back for now. So we could do all three, we can thread all three of these at the same time. It's a little bit tricky, but you just do the same thing. Make like a little bump, thread those through. This will make it a little bit easier to see. And then right here, we're just going to pull that through and we can pull it all the way out. There we go. And then let's finish this eye. So make sure that you're positioned in the right little spot. All right, so let's just keep going through. We have just a few more stitches. You can do this however you, if you've ever sewn a um, little applique onto crochet work, you can do this however you normally do it. But if you've never done it before, this is a good beginning reference. Make sure you just get in every stitch because that helps it to really be secure. Okay, so we're back where we started. Now we're just gonna go ahead and pop that into the very back, the inside of the bag. We're gonna pull this open, pull that through, and then you're just gonna make a couple knots with the two black pieces. Make sure they're not coming out of the same little hole from the bag. Make sure that there are stitches in between and we're just gonna make a couple knots. Okay, and there's our third one. Usually the third one is where I'll tighten it pretty tight. Because we tied these pretty well, you can cut these with just about an inch. You can weave them in if you didn't wanna cut it, you could weave them back into the eye, but since it's the center of the bag, you don't really have to worry about them too much. Um, you can just kind of leave them in here. You can even cut those a little bit shorter if you want to. So go ahead and repeat that with the second eye. And remember, just make sure that you have these six stitches in between. So we're gonna start our next eye around these two. And the same thing, make sure that this little highlight faces um, from the center up to the right. And we're gonna attach that right about here. 
So go ahead and sew that one on and then I'll meet you to show you how to attach the nose. Okay, our second eye is attached. We still have our stitch marker here just to mark the midpoint of um, the face. And let's attach the nose. So with the very long side, we're gonna thread that into our needle. Set that aside for a second. And you wanna just lay this up. So usually I'll start right below, so you can see where the stitching is um, right below the eyes. That's where I kinda like to line that up there and just you're going to stitch that right into the very center it will work around these four stitches here so we're just going to I do like to go back first before I line it up like this and then hold this up we're going to line it about right there which means that we'll go into the stitch here Let's just come out that one now. Okay. <clears throat> so that lines that up. And then go into the next stitch. Make sure it's nice and even and then go underneath. And I do like to go back into the stitch that I just came out of because I like the way that that looks better. Let's just move that out of the way. So just continue stitching this on. Stop every couple stitches just to make sure you're kind of lined up in the right place. So I'm coming back to where we first started. We could take our marker out. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna go back through one more time. And I'm gonna pull that the needle actually out like this. So leave this attached. We're just gonna forget about this little string right now. And then from the back side, you're going to want to try to aim for the bottom of the nose. There we go. Then you can kind of adjust your nose a little bit. So we wanna make just a little bit of a mouth area. So just come down we're gonna go down into, um, we're gonna make sure to go th over this stitch here and just go back in and then try to come out just about the same place and we're going to do this a few times let's see is three good maybe we'll do it four times um no three's not bad Okay, now another reason why we left this so long is because we're going to use the same piece to make the whiskers. So we want to make three on each side. So with this still attached, the reason why I like to kind of keep this out is because I do like to kind of see about where I want the whiskers to come out. So we're going to kind of make it up across these stitches here. So we're just going to kind of go across. So what that means is we want to come out. I usually go towards the inside, I fold that back. So come out about here. Don't pull too tight because you don't want this to be too tight. And then we're just going to go in a stitch, come out a stitch, go in a stitch, come out. That looks about right. And now we're gonna go back into the same and then come out, but you'll notice that we're going the opposite way this time. Back in and out. Let's get that little tail out. Okay. There's one part of the whisker. We'll do the other one just about straight across. We'll make this one a little bit longer. So again, in and out, and out, in. I guess we'll come out to here. Now let's go back in the other way. Just remember not to pull too tight. 
And let's pull the tail out. All right, there's a second little whisker. And then we'll put one more right below. So make sure to kind of come out from the inside. There we go. And this one we're gonna make a little bit smaller also. So in, out, in. I guess we could stop there. You can make these again any size that you want to. And you could do any color. You could do them white if you wanted. And there we go. So there's one side. Go ahead and do that to the other side. You can also take this now and you can just um, thread this onto the needle and pull that back inside. And then um, we'll knot that to this end here once we get that finished um, with the whiskers on this side. Okay, so I just finished attaching the last little um, whiskers over here. You could add some extra little finishing touches if you wanted to, like some cute little eyelashes, maybe um, some applique roses up here or cute little flowers. That would be pretty. But let me show you now how to attach the cords up here so it makes it into a little drawstring bunny backpack. So we're just about done. Our bunny bag is almost complete. We just have to attach the cord. So I did end up crocheting two of these cords and I made them right at 50 inches long because they have some stretch to them. So I know that over time they'll stretch out just a little bit. And for 50 inches, that what ended up being 384 single crochets um, to make each cord. So let's start with the first one. I'm just gonna thread this through. You don't have to thread your needle. It's not really necessary, but I think it's just a little bit easier. So we're gonna thread that and set that aside for a second. So now we wanna look at our work and you wanna find the midpoint, which is this lowest area right here where this hole is. And then we're gonna count over five clusters of stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. That next space right here is our midpoint and that's where we wanna start. So we're just gonna leave our hook there for a second. And that's where we're gonna go into because we want both pieces of the cord coming out of this stitch right here. So we're just gonna go in and out, in and out until we get to the opposite side. And there's one thing that is the only tricky part about this. I'm gonna pause right here for a second because we're right at this um, second midpoint. And we're gonna count over five, one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice that we can't, how do I say this? We can't keep going in and out. We have to skip both of these stitches here in order for the stitches to be even and for it to both come out evenly on the opposite end. So for that to make sense, let me show you what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna keep going in and out here but when we get to this side here, we wanna jump two of these clusters. So we're gonna go into this. So we're gonna skip this one here and then just keep going. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it so this comes out where this one comes out. All right, so now we just wanna make sure you can get rid of your needle, you don't need it. You wanna just make sure that this is straight. So make sure that these are even, and then you can kind of pull this to make that straight. So there is our first cord attached. What we're gonna end up doing, we'll do one at a time. If you open this up here, you wanna take these two ends and we're gonna work these together into the back side here. So flip this around. So you wanna look and see where the midpoint of your work is, which the midpoint is gonna be right in here. And just 
eyeball it. So just eyeball kind of where the midpoint is. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you want to go, I would say about an inch over because each one is gonna be on each side. An inch, let's do an inch and a half. So we'll do it about right here from the midpoint. And right here is where we want to attach these two cords together. So you wanna make sure that they're above this ridge right here, up kind of in between. We're gonna skip this first row and we're gonna go into the second row here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna thread this through and we're just gonna go under two of them. Make sure that you're not getting the front end of your work. So you can put your hand in here to make sure that you're not catching both sides. All right, so we're gonna put this in. And then I'm gonna go back through the cord, just kind of like right in the middle. Again, there's no right way to do this, but it just will help to secure it a little bit more. And then we're gonna go back in. And then we're just gonna pull this out. So we're gonna leave this here for a second because we have to attach the other side. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the second piece. Right about the same stitches. We're gonna go in just a slightly different one, but right in the same space. Pull that through, go back through a few of these. And then we'll go back in kind of down here, close to where that one is going in. We're gonna turn this inside out for a second. And now where these two pieces are, we're just gonna tie these. And you can tie them tight. And again, you can weave this one through because of the color, which I would recommend, but I'm just gonna give this a snip. And if it's not completely even here, it's okay because you can um, pull it through to make it even. So there's your first side attached. Now let's go ahead and add the second side. So let's grab your cord. We're gonna thread that through. Okay, so now we're gonna go onto the opposite side and we're gonna go to the area where we skipped this hole here. So see how we went over this hole? That's where we wanna come out of for both. So we're gonna go into this hole and we're gonna go just above this cord. So in, out, just the opposite of what we already did. Pull that through. The nice thing about this side is that you can see where these two come out. You wanna skip over both of those. So we're just gonna skip over both and then continue weaving in and out on this side. And if you did this correctly, you should come out at the same um, little opening, the same gap here that you started. All right, we're gonna make sure that these are both close to the same length. So we're gonna pull this one a little bit. All right, let's flip our work. Our work, our bag, because it is a bag now. Let's flip that around. And let's just kind of loosely, again, look where the midpoint is, kind of see how far over that is. And we want kind of that same distance for this strap here. All right, so at this point, you can weave in the rest of your ends, which I won't do on camera. And I am so excited to say that your bag is done. So when you pull these two ends, it'll tighten the bag and make this cute little bunny, these little bunny ears and this cute little bunny bag. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed coming up with this cute little bunny backpack pattern and I hope that you like it too. If you do happen to make one, I love seeing your pictures. I'm very active on Instagram, so you can hop on over there and um, find me. My handle is Jen Noel Boutique. I'll put the link down below and all the links to all the different places that you can find me are below also. But again, I hope that you like this tutorial and um, enjoy your new little bunny backpack.